We're going to continue to define our rectangle class. We've got the constructor method, but now it's time to add methods that give rectangle objects functionality. And the first kind of method that we're going to write is the type of method that we use often to ask an object for information about itself. And these kinds of methods are typically called accessor methods, or sometimes they're called getter methods. And what that basically means is that we're going to ask rectangle objects to get particular attributes. So for example, with rectangles, we might want to ask the rectangle to give us its height, or to give us its width, or perhaps something a little more complicated, we could say, uh, ask the rectangle to give us an, its area or its perimeter. And so we'll define these methods the same way we define the constructor. We'll define uh, the method, and we get to call the method now whatever we wish. Unlike the constructor, which has a specific name, these methods now, these, these methods that we are creating uh, can be named anything. So, for example, it might make sense to write a method called getWidth. Now, just like with the constructor, the question about the parameters is the same as always. What does this method need to do its work? Well, if you're trying to write a method to get the width from a rectangle, then really it doesn't need any additional information. So, in a sense, there are no parameters for this method. But, because it is a method of a class, we always include the implicit parameter. Because this is the parameter that will reference back to the object itself. And so, the parameter list will only contain self, which means that I won't have to pass any explicit values to it when I use the getWidth method. And, all we want this method to do, really, is just return the value of the width of the rectangle. And so we'll just create a return statement and we're going to return the value self.width. Now remember, self.width is the width that is maintained in the state of the object. Self is a reference to the object, a reference to the rectangle, and then dot .width is that particular uh, variable that is contained inside of the rectangle object. And likewise, we could do the same thing for get height. Again, it doesn't need anything to do its work, and it's just going to return the height of the rectangle. We could also define get area, which again doesn't need anything to do its work, and it's going to return the product of the width times the height. And that means that we're going to have to do a little bit of calculation, but it's still going to be a simple return. So let's create a, 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 an expression. Area is a reference to self.width multiplied by self.height. And then we'll return the value of area. Now, I wouldn't have had to put that expression that assignment statement, uh, I could have just put the expression right into the return. But what I wanted to show was that just like any method that we write, not only do we have parameters, but we can also have local variables. So in this case, area is a local variable that is being set equal to the value of the width multiplied by the height. But of course, the width and the height are both preceded by the word self, which means that they are the width and height of the rectangle object itself. The area variable, on the other hand, is not part of the state. The area variable is being computed, but it's not being stored inside the rectangle. It's being computed when needed. And we could do the same thing with asking for the perimeter. So the perimeter would be two times the width added to two times the height. And then we would return the value of perimeter. Now, 
We could create some other accessor methods if we would like, but that's probably enough for now. We might want to think about one additional type of method, and that would be a method that might change something about the rectangle object. And so, for example, perhaps what we could do is add a method that would allow us to tell the object to make itself larger. And so maybe we could write a method called enlarge, and the enlarge method will need one piece of information to do its work, that is the multiplier. So maybe we want to tell it to enlarge by a factor of 2 or enlarge by a factor of 3. Well, as usual, we also will need the self-parameter. So the enlarge method needs explicitly the factor that it's going to use, and then implicitly the first parameter will always be a reference to the object itself. And in this particular case, we're not going to return anything, but rather we're actually going to change the values of the state of the object. And so self.width is going to be redefined to be a reference to the old value of self.width multiplied by the factor. And the same thing is going to be true with the height. It's going to be the old value of the height multiplied by the factor. No return statement, simply modifying or mutating the state data within the object. So now we have a fairly complete class definition, and the typical thing to do would be to save that. And so we'll just go ahead and save it as rectangle.py. And notice in this case that I'm not storing it as a capital R rectangle, but rather I'm using a little letter for the file name. And so we say that what we're really doing here is to create, in a sense, a module called rectangle, which contains a class called capital R rectangle. Well, one thing that we can do is actually execute this class. We can ask the Python environment to run the class. And when we do that, what will happen is the class will be loaded, and now in the Python shell, if we ask to evaluate the name rectangle, we see that in fact it is a class that has been defined. And furthermore, we can use the rectangle class. We can create rectangles. 10 by 5, and we can say ask the rectangle for its width, and we can ask the rectangle for its height, and we can ask the rectangle for its area, and then we could say ask the rectangle to enlarge by a factor of 3, and if we do that, and then ask for the width again, we'll see that in fact it has changed and so obviously the area will have changed as well. So what we're doing here is just interactively exercising the class. We're checking to make sure that all of the methods that we wrote are working. Later on what we could do is use that module in another program to write code that would manipulate rectangles in some way to solve a problem.